Hi and welcome to the second video where we're going to look at some more natural processes on coastal dunes. Uh, in this video we're going to focus on some of the processes which occur as we move inland from the coastal um, active beach zone towards the high dune area. And what we're going to look at is something called biogeography, which is the way that um, the living um, creatures are interrelated and um, their sort of pattern and role across the, the coastal dunes. And we're also going to look at just the role of the dunes themselves as we move inland. So we'll start towards the front of the dune system and make our way inland to the hind dunes. So we'll start looking at um, just first of all the general dune profile. Um, and you can see here that there's three distinct zones of vegetation and they have different names according to that vegetation type or where you are generally on the um, dune. So at the very front of the beach, you've got the, 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 where the waves crash, the active beach zone, and then the beach berm, which is probably where you go and, you know, sit while you're um, in between swimming or sunbaking. And then the first um, location where we have the primary vegetation, we call that the incipient dune. As you move further inland, you start to get to that bit of a, a hump. That's the secondary vegetation zone, um, otherwise known as the fore dune, and the, the downhill area behind it we would call a swale. Moving further inland again, we get to the hind dune area, where tertiary vegetation is. And you should be able to see a clear pattern with the vegetation type as you move inland, away from all the exposure on the beach. And we're going to look at each one of those independently. Something just to keep in mind, and it's labelled here on this particular diagram, is that each of these different um, areas of the dune, the incipient, fore dune and hind dune areas, all have a different role to play. And that's what we're going to investigate here. The incipient dune is the first area of the um, coastal dune system that you're going to see some vegetation. Now, this vegetation has got to withstand some really harsh conditions like high sun exposure, exposure to strong winds, salt spray, sand burial, being pummeled by sand. So this vegetation is going to be really hardy and not many vegetation species can handle all those conditions. So the ones that we do find there are often um, things like grasses, marum, spinifex grass, um, beach fescus, that sort of thing. Now, they have a pretty important role to play because they're the first line of defense for the coastal dune system. Coastal dunes provide a lot of protection for the land behind them because they end up being a store of sand that can be um, taken away if there's a large storm surge with destructive wave capabilities. So if a destructive wave comes along, it's this primary vegetation zone that's going to be affected the most. So the, the vegetation that you find there is capable of, of withstanding those conditions, including sand barrel, which is quite amazing. So it can grow um, for, uh, underground, needing some exposure to the um, atmosphere at times. The other important thing to note is that the soil conditions here are pretty poor as well. If you've ever dug um, sand at the beach, you'll know that it's just, it's just sand. There's nothing much to it. So the most important role that this um, vegetation plays is to first of all stabilise the dune system, really anchor and lock in place the coastal dune itself or that sand. And that does that by its really thick matted root system. And then the other role it plays is to um, add nutrients to the soil to really improve the soil very slightly so that maybe other vegetation species can move in um, and establish themselves in the future. So what it will do is it will um, add nitrogen to the soil by pairing it with some oxygen um, via its root system and some bacteria on there. And that, those nitrates that then go into the soil um, really do become um, the, the ignition point for further growth in the dunes because nitrogen is something that you often find in fertilizers. So theoretically, you know, good on these, these grasses because they are really kickstarting the coastal dune ecosystem. On some of the photographs that you'll see, you'll see that it's very sparse vegetation and there's only a limited number of species there. So like I said, it is very much a hostile environment on the incipient dune 
So those high levels of exposure to all those negative things mean that only a certain number of species can survive there. Moving inland, the next area of the dune system is the four dune and swale. This is the area which hosts the secondary species of vegetation and this is um, characterised by lots of shrubs. I have to apologise that when I recorded my incipient dune um, video at the beach, it was ruined by all the wind. So um, I've got a video set up for you for the um, uh, secondary um, vegetation, the four dune and swale. So um, enjoy that. All right, just to give you a bit of context, I'm now in the swale or the mid-dune area and um, I'm showing you that I'm standing on the track because I don't want to walk onto the fragile vegetated parts of the ecosystem. So I'll just give you some commentary about what I see from this um, swale area. They call it a swale because you can see probably directly in front of me now, there's a high sand dune that which leads directly to the um, beach zone and to the back of me it will normally rise up a little bit as well in the high dune area. So I'm fairly well protected in here because a lot of the strong winds and the salt um, that normally get blown in um, will get deflected upwards because of that high dune in, in front of us towards the beach. So this is an area where maybe trees don't necessarily grow but large shrubs will as well instead. So some of the species that we can see here are some lamandra grass, um, we can see some coastal wattle here. You can tell that. Lamandra. Um, we can see some tea tree at the back there. But some of these species are the ones that can withstand a, a little bit of sand burial, a little bit of salt spray, but they probably can't withstand it for a lot of the time. So they hide out here in the swale. Again, this is an area of the dune which um, is partially protected, but it's still exposed to harsh levels of sunlight. So not much shade goes on here. And the other thing that we'll also see is that um, it, a lot of the um, bird species who don't want to get sand buried will also migrate and, and settle in here as well. So just to sum up a couple of those ideas that you saw in the video, um, the swale and the foredune is protected a little bit more than the incipient dune was, so not as much of the harsh conditions, and therefore there's more vegetation there, it's more dense and tightly packed, and there are a couple of more different species that we would never see on the incipient dune. Interestingly, going back to the idea of biogeography, because the incipient um, plants, such as the grasses, were stabilizing the dune and adding nutrients to it, the um, plants here, like the coastal wattle, are always trying to migrate a little bit further forward on the dune. So what they'll do is they'll send out runners along the ground. Once they get um, a little bit further forward on the dune, they send down root systems and then they start to grow upwards from there. So they've anchored themselves in before they start to get um, blown over by the wind as um, saplings. So the primary role of the four dune species is to provide some stabilization, provide some nutrients and habitat, but um, really they are trying to maximize their space in the dune. It's like a bit of a race. Moving further inland again, the last area of the dune is called the hind dune, where you find the tertiary vegetation characterized by trees as well as um, an understory of shrubs. Um, I've got another video. I can't guarantee the quality of this one, but try and enjoy it. All right, I'm just going to do a quick video about the hind dune area. So this is the area furthest away from the um, coastal active beach zone. So we're starting at the back of the dunes and you'll see here that I'm in amongst a lot of large trees and we'll probably have things like she oaks, tea trees, and we do have some um, understory coastal wattle still around here. And a lot of this area you can see is very um, poorly lit and that's because these large trees provide a lot of shade and cover and that's great because that means that there's um, lower rates of evaporation in the hind dune area and that means that um, it, it's a more moist environment and the more moisture that you collect in an environment particularly the soils means that more species can survive and thrive there so in this hind dune area 
we probably also have the highest rates of biodiversity on the coastal dune. So that means more species live here because it's a bit more hospitable. It's not as windy, it's not as sunny and salty, and it's also um, a more moist environment. If I was able to, I might have a go. If I dig into some of this leaf litter here, and I bring up some of the soil, don't do this kids, you might get in trouble. Check out that color of that soil. That's brown. We don't usually get brown soil. It's very sandy and it's still fairly dry. Again, you can see it as I just move it through my fingers. It's, it's falling like it's dry. But that's got a nice dark brown color to it. The dark brown color um, of soil, the darker the soil, the general rule is that it's got more plant matter, organic matter in it. So as these trees maybe drop their leaves, um, they decompose and their nutrients get recycled back into the soil. And that's a good indicator again of a healthy ecosystem, one that supports a lot of life. I'm about to shock you and probably your um, screens with some light here. But if I just turn around to where the um, walking track for people is, this is in the high dune area. And the reason why we go from thick tertiary vegetation to almost nothing is because this is a highly modified example of tertiary dunes. This is not natural. So this area would have been mined for sand at one point. The coastal dunes at Cronulla used to be as much as 70 metres tall. So in this area, that's where some of that mining has probably occurred. But you can see we go from tertiary vegetation to public walking track back to some tertiary vegetation. So along this area, there's been some um, human intervention. So just to sum up a couple of ideas from that video, that was shot at Cronulla um, in the last remaining um, semblance, I guess, of the, the native vegetation that's there. And um, the high dune area is what we call a climax community of vegetation. And that means that it's gone through all the different stages of its um, sort of, I don't know, evolution's a good word to use, maybe. Um, so it may have, that area, you know, when it first became covered in sand, would have been first colonised by some um, grasses. They came in first because it was a hostile, sandy environment. They set themselves up and anchored the soil, added nutrients, so then some, you know, more shrubs came along. Those shrubs, again, provided um, more organic or nutrients, um, organic matter and nutrients to the soil. And then once they had um, improved the soil and the conditions there as well, that's when you started to get these larger trees being, um, sorry, growing in that area. So it's it's basically this idea of biogeography and, and reaching a climax community is the different stages of, of vegetation communities to you reach the, the end goal of having a complex environment. So these tertiary um, species that we find here play an important role of, of um, giving that shade, making it a nice um, moist environment, limiting evaporation and providing further protection. And it's also a great habitat for other species. So for anyone who's pretending that they're doing field work while they're learning from home, um, here is just a, an image that I found somewhere, probably online, which has some sample data about the conditions that you might measure as you move from the left on the coastal um, active zone and as you move right across this diagram you'll end up in the high dune area inland. So feel free to pause the video and have a look at that data and um, see what patterns that you can notice in the data.